All right, what's going on, guys? All right, so today I am reviewing my uh, final table that I had last night of the Long Car 88. And I guess let's turn off. Um, first of all, we'll show chips in Big Blind. And we'll go ahead and uh, turn off the known hole cards. All right, so I ended up getting um, <clears throat> seventh place in this. Uh, here's an open. So this guy opens here. Uh, we could three bet this. I would start three betting like nines, I guess. Um, eights probably the cutoff for me. Um, here, I do think that we could leave this board. Uh, we're just so deep that these hands like don't really matter too much in the beginning of the tournament. Um, but yeah, anyway. All right, so back to back eights, queens. Uh, so I like to make it bigger, um, especially out of position and when we're deep I wouldn't even mind going a little bit bigger here like maybe 17 big blinds uh just because like I said we're, we're so deep that I feel like these guys are still going to set mine their um their pocket pairs so anyway we end up hitting on um hitting a set pretty freaking awesome board and I go half pot I am not 100% sure three ways what the best sizing is. Obviously, I have a huge range, range advantage on this board. Um, I don't even think checking is that bad. So checking would probably be a good play as well. And going smaller, letting all ace X continue. Maybe like king jack, jack 10 continue. If you go like 15 bigs. Um, if you had like jack 10 and diamonds or king jack and diamonds. Or maybe like, yeah, those are like the only two that would call, I think, from, from this position. Um, pre, uh, they wouldn't call like the King Jacko. All right. So anyway, they end up both folding. By the way, these are only hands that I've be pipped so that it's just a small number of hands. It's, I think it's 87 hands total and we do not see bet and we just fold. Um, again, these early stages of the tournaments, these hands aren't really that important. You don't want to get in big pots in my opinion. Uh, this was a stupid, stupid hand looking back on it. Um, I thought, this is just dumb. Like, once he raises the turn, uh, I thought maybe he had just had, like, they, again, this is horrible. Like, this is the this is my worst hand of the tournament, I think. I'm sure we'll find more, but anyway, I just rip it, and we're so deep. I was just, like, thinking, I, I was playing a lot of tables at the time, and, and this is where playing a lot of tables gets me sometimes, and I'm just like, cool, like, I'm just going to get it in. This dude's obviously got a huge hand, like, Maybe ace nine, something like that. But I think mm, you probably bet that on the on the flop. Um, so what's weird to me is like if you think about his range here, he's gonna have like his bluffs might be like if he opened eight ten of diamonds on the gun, which he should be. Jack ten of diamonds, obviously. Um, maybe he could turn a hand like king nine of diamonds into a bluff, queen nine of diamonds, jack nine of diamonds. But I think those would just want to like call, right? So those uh, those hands are not really a thing once once it checks around and then, you know, this small small bet by the big blunt, or um, sorry, small lead by me on the turn. I don't think, I don't think he would, he would, like he has showdown value with the nine X like diamond combo. So I don't think he would be turning those into a bluff. Um, Ever. So when he raises here, it's just like super suspicious, super suspect. And I actually remember after I jammed, I was like, oh, shit. like I, I might get called by like aces here or nines. And uh, he ends up having aces. So granted, I, well, the board ran out like four, obviously. So we're, we're never folding. Um, the money's probably just going all in by the river regardless. But when you get the money in, in a spot, you want to make sure that you allow your opponent to have worse hands and like and still be able to call you right with this jam here I, I don't give my opponent a chance to call with worse hands especially you know after he checks the checks the flop so pretty bad play by me i will say that just too many tables um here we actually ended up we oh we ended up spinning up this stack a little bit and then we uh we lost um and had to rebuy um, yeah, that was my, this is my rebuy hand. So he called a 9 10 from, from the button shop. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, anyway, all right, so then we rebought. We got a fresh stack, and this is the stack that, you know, took us to, to the championship here, to the final table. This is weird. Um, I think, obviously, I should be, like, like, I think the sizing is what threw me off. Like, um, the sizing's really good, too, because it kind of puts me in a bad spot with a five. So if he's doing the sizing with, uh, you know, sixes, sevens, eights, nines, tens, jacks, queens, kings, eights, like all his pocket pairs, obviously. I don't think he'd be doing this with a nine. Uh, but he would be doing it with all his other pocket, like all his pocket pairs and above a five. So, and he's also doing it obviously with like, you know, over cards too, just to kind of like put me in a bad spot if I do have a five and kind of polarize my range. So if I do check raise or if I continue, you know, it's going to have to be a, a bigger sizing because he went bigger. Um, so if you went like, you know, 1.5 X here, like a 25% pot and I make it seven bigs. Now he's in a weird predicament and I could have a nine a lot. And he's just kind of guessing, maybe trying to call me down with ace high where if he makes it this 4.77 and I want to check raise, I'm gonna have to make it like 11 bigs at minimum, right? Like that's still just even a small check raise. So he puts me in a really bad spot going bigger there. I like that sizing by him. I decide just to fold the four five because I, I there's just not many good turns. Um, I should be c betting this. I I, I guess like I, I, I well I don't guess. I mean I should be c betting it. I think like 10 8, 10 9, like those boards though, like they, they hit the small ones flying range a lot. He has a lot of pocket pairs. He has a lot of like suited ace x, but then he also has like a lot of middling cards here. So I'm not sure exactly uh, what the the correct c bet frequency is would be there. Um, so yeah, here we get a 4 bet jam in, pretty standard. I actually, I actually hate that I didn't see about this. Um, you know, like obviously the button has like a seven suited, seven eight suited, seven nine suited, six seven suited, uh, and then the big blind uh, obviously has um, pretty much like king seven, like all the su suited seven x, and then um, like seven eight off, six seven off, nine seven off, ten seven. He might defend ten seven off. I don't know if he would, but. Uh, and I think we got away cheap, even though we didn't see that. Here, it's it's weird. I, I flat, I could do like an exploit, like three bet fold, or not even an exploit. I mean, just like standard, I guess, we could, we could make it that. But the problem is, is the sizing that he made it is just, uh, it's pretty hard to deal with when he makes it 2.78 and I have 25 bigs. Um, I need to go like seven bigs and then basically be putting like fourth of my stack in or more than that. Um, I could go like 6.5, like that's what I'm saying, like exploit 6.5 fold or like 5.5 and or 5.8, something like that. And this just establish, you know, some range advantage there. Uh, here we get check raised all in. He has 10 10. So I'm glad I didn't reshift pre because. Uh, obviously if he's just going to get it in with me and I have him that crush, then there's no need to flip with him pre, but it's a weird spot for me. Here I go for the jam. Uh, we were against Jack, Jack and King, Queen. So we got very lucky and we won the flip. That's what you need to do in tournaments. Here, uh, I, honestly, like this is, this is kind of weird for me. Um, I think three bet calling off is better than just like ripping it in. Uh, so this is kind of a mistake. I think this is just like lazy poker by me. Uh, that's that's what my, my friend calls it every time we review hands. And, you know, there's situations where you should be three bet calling off um, arise. And I decide just to like rip it in, which is still a profitable play. Like it's not not profitable to just rip it in here. But... If you don't have three bet call off, so the hand is good as ace jack off, then your three bet call off range is going to be like very dust. Like it's going to be a lot. It's going to be very, very, very polarized to a few hands of value, and then like probably a lot of bluffs. Like 
You know what I mean? Like, if you only have ace, king, and ace, queen, raise, calling it off here, and then your pocket pairs, like aces, kings, queens, jacks, um, maybe ten, tens too. Nines, I'd probably just rip. But anyway, if you, if you only have, like, those very top percent hands, and then you have, like, king, jack, o, uh, which... I'd, I'd probably rip that actually. Okay, so like, I guess the better example would be like ace 3 0, ace 4 0, ace 5 0, ace 6 0, ace 7 0. Like stuff like that, right? That you're just like not flatting from the small blind, but you also are, uh, you, it, it's a good hand to steal with because obviously you block his ace x, it's going to like rip on you when you do that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's like a weird spot where I definitely think that I'm making a mistake by not just three bet calling it off. Here, this guy jams, we call, and we beat Jack-10. Pretty good flop for him. All right, so Jax. Um, before I do this, I, I think by sizing here, I think, so first of all, I think I should be like 1.4, but I also think like checking back is probably good here when you flop top set. Uh, just allow them to start bluffing at it. So, yeah, that's like, it's like, I should be checking there, I think, like, more often than not. But he's still going to continue with, like, 6-7, you know, ace-4, four, uh, 4-6, four, if he has that. Like, maybe all his fives, he'll continue some of his threes. So I, I don't think it's like terrible to bet, but it's, just, it's hard for them to have anything on that board. So I think checking is better. All right, so we run into aces. Very standard hand though. Yeah, nothing wrong with that one. Here, um, I think I need to be blocker betting the river, especially when I have a 10 of hearts in my hand. Like, it makes it less flushes that he has. I mean, obviously, he you knows he's opening like 10 9 of hearts, jack 10 of hearts, um, king 10 of hearts, ace 10 of hearts. And I think, like, you know, I, I have a strong hand. Like, if he has jacks, if he turned a 9, then I need to be. I think I need to be betting. I think, like, honestly, though, like, the, I think my thought process during a hand like this is more so, like, what's he going to call me with once the heart gets there? Because once the heart gets there, like, do I really have bluffs? Like, maybe, like, maybe, like, Jack... No, 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 because it's Queen 5 deuce. Maybe if I continued with a hand, like, Ace 4 of Diamonds. Yeah, like, Ace 4 of Diamonds, I could see myself having here and betting the river and bluffing. Maybe a hand, like, 3-4... Suited if I defended three four suited, uh, which I would. It maybe like four six of diamonds, stuff like that would be would be bluffs here. Um, so I think if I'm gonna be bluffing those hands, then like to check a hand like queen ten like just seems so bad now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, I just don't have enough value bets on the river if that's the case. Here we just call it the king jack. I think like. So he raises off like 17.6 bigs. If the big blind had like maybe like less than 25 bigs, I think it's just ripping it's probably good. Um especially with that run out. Oh wait, he had 5-6. Alright. So yeah, that, that hint's fine. Three back getting it in wouldn't be like terrible either. So this hand, what happened here? So this guy, okay, so he limped. Yeah, pretty standard. I, I need to go like smaller on these boards. Um, It's not like terrible, but going a little bit smaller is better. I like the size in. So I decide just to like rip turn. He has a half pot left, so anything less than that is just like stupid. Uh, I know I have the best hand, like almost no, I have the best hand always. Like he would just like check raise all in on the flop, I think, with sets. Um flush draws, he would check raise all in on the flop too. So 
I'm not really like scared of any rivers. I think I think he probably has a hand like maybe eights, nines, tens. Uh, how many hands bigs did he start the hand with? No, so he would get in tens, maybe eights. It's hard to like. It's hard to say like what what he's actually continuing with here. That folds the turn. So again, if it looks like I'm getting a lot of good hands, it's it's just because of the fact that I only did the hands I v pipped. All right, so I win that one. And ten five suited. Oh, I should be betting that turn. That's that's a mistake. It's a mistake for sure. Uh, yeah, I decided just to fold here. I think, I think ISO wing is probably like the best play. Seems good, but, um, shoot, again, this is so lazy of me. This is ex the exact spot I was just talking about. Like, I think, what's the blind level? I was going to say like, I think actually maybe I will I will try to defend this. We are actually a, a close to the money bubble or on the money bubble. I I do actually I do remember this hand. So we're on the money bubble or like very close to, to being in the money. Um which would be the money bubble anyway, just like you know, ten people off. And it's an eighty-eight dollar tournament. Uh obviously it's not like a huge buy-in, but still for what I'm playing like right now, um with the current downswing I've been on, I just like drop stakes. So 88's on like the upper end. I do want to cash, as fishy as that sounds, but um, cashing tournaments reduces variance a lot if you care about that. So I uh, I elected to jam. I, I do think that it's probably better to, to just three bet call it off if it's not anywhere near the money bubble. And I think I normally would always do that. So here we just fold. I don't want to play King 10 out of position to one person. And like if I just flat here, then Queen B's is always calling. And then like I have no idea what Mill Dado's range is when he does like a min raise, basically. So here, yeah, I see that. It's fine. We are like on the direct money bubble now. I'm pretty sure because I, I specifically remember this hand being like, oh, uh, if I bust. I think we're past it because I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't have opened the Queen Jack Arch. So. Oh, so this is interesting. All right, so I decided to raise off of 10 bigs. Um, I think it's more of like an exploit thing where like people think you're just completely nutted when you uh, when you open off 10 bigs. And I don't think they're going to be re-jamming, you know, worse, worse hands on you. Um, I'd be terrified if I, if I had, if I had like, I mean, this sounds stupid, but if I had like nines right here, I would just be like terrified. Be like, wow, he's min raising off 10.7 bigs. He's got the nuts. All right, so here we uh, we got short just because the blinds went up. No other reason than that. Oh, this hand's actually worth talking about. I honestly, I don't. I just thought like, uh, uh, I thought I didn't have much fold equity, even though it would be half his stack. So actually, I, I take it back now looking at it now. Obviously, it's easier to see these things when you're going back reviewing the hands instead of uh, playing in game and seeing these things. I, I mean, I don't think, I could be wrong. I, I got to talk to some people about this, but I don't think we should have any flats here at all. Like any, unless we're just like trapping aces. Um, but then that seems pretty unbalanced. Uh, I, I don't think it's like terrible. I mean, it's unconventional, that's for sure. But I, I honestly, I don't, 
I don't see anything wrong with it. There's a lot of flops where we just flop a good de decent equity and get it in and, you know, run all run the rest of the hand. But uh, and then there's then there's like flops like that where I'm just able just to fold, like you know, like I flop zero equity. So yeah, here we have six point six three bigs. We call it off. We win. Pretty good run up. Here jam standard. Jam the sixes, get a clean run out versus ace king. That's nice. Who? All right, good. Oh, it's small. Um, obviously, like any hand I have here that I open, I would bet this size in this board's so good for me. This dude, like, what sucks? What sucks about these boards is you just know they're just like auto folding. So it's good if you have a hand like Jack Ten or like you know whatever Ten Nine, and you open Ten Nine suited. But when you have a hand as good as ace king and the board comes to ace king four and the big blind only defended off of like twelve bigs, you're just praying they have a hand like ace, ace deuce or ace three or ace five, like ace six, something they wouldn't rejam pre, but they would still defend. All right, this was this was an interesting hand. I uh, if I like took my time and I really thought about this one in game. I was like, all right, if I have ace jacko here, I'm like a hundred percent folding. I think ace queen o, ace jack suited, um, and then probably like, I would say eights plus, eights plus is like probably what my range is here. So eights plus, yeah, eights plus, ace queen o, ace jack suited, plus. Um, we gotta look and see what our equity is. Versus uh. Versus his his range here, so let's just say like the hands he's rejamming here. Um, I would say he's probably he's probably rejamming something like this. Um, maybe not that. I don't think he's rejamming these. Like I don't, I don't. So I can just like take ace, 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 and ace king out of his range. Um, I'll even take like ace deuce and ace three out, and keep ace five zero in there. Uh, I'll take ace eight zero out and queen jack. It, queen jack's iffy. Like it, I'll take it out just cause, and then like queen jack suited. I think he flat. Um. Yeah. That looks okay to me. So, oh, okay, wait. He he didn't put the deuce deuce in there. I could even see him ripping jack 10 suited. Yeah. So we're 55% versus that range. If we start making it tighter, like, let's see how tight he has to be to, like, not make it a call. Say he doesn't do that. Let's say he doesn't do these. He doesn't do that. All right, let's take King-10 suited out. Uh, let's take this out, too. And let's just take out deuces and threes. I mean, I'm still ahead of his range, so it's kind of like... I think, I think I just, like, have to call here. Um... Trying to get it to even. All right, so that's so an even in, and like he's got to be shoving a little wider than this. Ace ten suited, ace five suited. So ace ten suited plus, ace five suited plus, king queen suited. He definitely shoves king queen o too. I need to put that in there. Oh, it's okay. It is in there. Uh, yeah, king jack off, ace ten off. So uh, let me let me take out king jack o too because that might be a three bet fold. So it's like very 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 close if we give him that tight of range. But I definitely still think he's shoving like threes. And I definitely think sometimes he shoves like these hands here. Um so it's it's very, very, very close. Very close. If I ran these numbers in game and I looked at it, I would probably just like think, okay, I'm passing on this spot because um I don't want to take the variance. Like I thought, I thought maybe it was closer to that first, the first, you know, initial run I did where it was like, where I'm like, you know, 53 to 55%, depending on which, you know, take out a couple of hands, put a couple of hands in. 
I, I think maybe it's closer to probably 51, 52% for my equity, but yeah, I decided to call, I decided to call and I beat eights, which is very fortunate. Uh, here sucks. We ran into it. He had ace king. I think it's perfectly standard here. I three bet the queen seventh suited. That's the guy that ended up winning the tournament. Um, yeah, this is lazy. Open king five suited under the gun. I think I think it's fine. Like if the I, maybe I think it, what what it was is I noticed the table was kind of like tightening uh, tightening up a little bit as we got deeper in the money. So, all right. So here, it was like very close to me for whether I should be three betting or ripping. Honestly, like. The problem with three betting is from the big blind in this particular spot, when you have 23 big blinds, any good player is going to know that you are absolutely bladed. So when, when you three bet here and you make it like, you know, seven big blinds, right? And you have 15 bigs left, like you just look absolutely nutted. And in my opinion, I want to have aces in my range along with, you know, my sevens, eights, nines, tens, jacks that I'm jamming here, or my ace, ace, jack, oh, if I have that here, like ace, queen. I want to have aces in that range too. Um, originally, my first thought in this hand was when the sickest bro opened, I was going to flat on the big blind with the aces and, and just uh, play, a, play a call from the, the big blinds just because I do defend so wide. Um, it's good to have aces in your, your range when you're defending. So, I just to protect your other hands, right? So I uh, I decided like once this once this stake PLO guy calls, I thought maybe he had a hand, you know, like eights, nines, tens, sevens, eights, nines, tens. Uh, maybe he'd find a call with, you know, nines, tens, and he could have like king queen suited. He would fold that, but. Um, outside of that, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's tough. Like, obviously I block the, I, I have aces. So I block like the suited ace, ace cards that he's calling with. Like if he's calling with like ace four suited, ace five suited, ace six suited, like stuff like that. You know, I block a lot of those combos, like half the combos of those hands basically. Um, so I just decided to just rip it in and I could be wrong. I mean, it could be good to have bluffs here. I just don't know what sizing I would pick. I don't know, like, um, like if I win seven bigs, do I really want to lose like a third of my stack? So yeah, in terms of playing my overall range, I think jamming here is the best play. If I had 25 bigs, yes, I think making it, you know, eight big blinds and then folding sometimes is perfectly fine because you do look, you do look nutted. So, uh, people are going to give you a lot of credit. But when you raise off twenty two point eight seven big blinds, it's like you just look. You like I said, you look absolutely nutty. You have fifteen big blinds left if you uh, if you have to fold, um, and your sizing is like a sizing where you know you're always getting called by by somebody. I feel like uh, so if you make it seven bigs and then you know the sickest bro folds, then then this stake ten PLO guy is. Uh, I mean, he's all he's he's probably gonna call. So you put yourself in a weird spot, because then you just have to jam post flop. So lucky for us, he ends up flatting kings pre, and we got the ultimate cooler, the aces versus kings. Here I decided to flat the deuces. Um, I call, and I check. And I remember thinking on this river, should I bet? Like, what hands is he gonna call me with if I bet? Um, and then I thought to myself. Like, no, it's better to let him bluff. Um, if he didn't have any showdown value at all, it's in my head, if he didn't have any showdown value at all in the turn, he would have kept barreling the turn, which would have been, like, is a, is a pretty good play. I mean, I, I guess I have, like, sixes, sevens and stuff, but I probably rip those pre more often than not. Um, so, like, if I, if I have, like, five plus here, I could see myself ripping it pre. Uh, anyway, um, 
I check, he checks. He has nine, ten off. So my check, my like, my line's perfectly fine. I'm happy with it. Oh, this is an interesting one. All right. So I decide to go sixty percent pot here. Probably would do the same with like aces, kings, queens, ace, jack, and then my bluffs as well. And so then on the deuce, I continue betting, uh, just because now I pick up a three. I still think if I hit a ten, like a decent amount of time, I'm I'm good. And he calls. I actually decide to rip here. Um, I think basically what I'm trying to accomplish here, he's never folding the jack, right? What I'm trying to accomplish here is I want to fold, you know, a hand like five, six, like any, any, any five X. I think five, six is like a very likely hand where, you know, he calls flop and then turns a, a gutter. So he calls again. Um, so something like that, like five, like that, yeah, like five X. Um, he could even call two streets with like, say he had a hand like ace four. He could call two streets with a hand like ace four as well. Uh, four three suited, call two streets. Um, yeah. So anyway, I decided to go ahead and put max pressure on him. Um, oh, the other scenario is, is what if he has a hand like, you know, what if he had. Mm, Actually, never mind. I take it back. Clubs would check jam the flop. So I don't think it'd be clubs. But if you had a hand like, in, for example, if he did have a hand like 9x of clubs, now he, he rivers value. Like he rivers the best hand versus me. So I think, yeah. I, I think I'd rather have a hand like King Queeno here, no clubs, or like, um, like King 8 of hearts or something like that, like to bluff with. Just because maybe Ace Ten does have a lot of showdown value versus Miss Flush Draws, but they're not. I don't think Miss Flush Draws are a thing. I actually take it back. I don't have any. I don't have any showdown value here at all. Um, but I'm saying like maybe he double floats Ace Highs sometimes. Uh, so that's why I'm saying like maybe like a hand like King Queen or King Ten or you know something like that, not blocking any other diamonds or clubs or whatever. But again, I, I just think clubs are irrelevant because if you look at stack sizes. He's probably just going to check raise, get it in with any type of club, uh, club draw that has an over at least. So I go for three streets. He tanked forever. And I think he ended up probably folding a five. So. Also, the thing is, is this is like the biggest mid stakes tournament of the day. It's the 88 long car. It's like 10K up top. Um, you know, I, I don't think. I think you're going to get a lot of credit in those spots with two tables left. Especially since he knows nothing about me. So here we go for it. I actually hate, hate my call here. I thought like maybe he was like just stabbing to stab like, it, you know, but the thing is, is I don't beat anything here. Like once he calls, it's like mostly like pocket pairs and like, you know, suited broadways and stuff like that, which he might start trying to bluff the turn if, you know, you had King Queen or King Jack. And I don't think a good player or like not a good player, just a decent player. I don't think a decent player would ever bet with worse than ace four here. Um, I think it would always be like five, sixes, sevens, eights, nines, uh, tens even. Jacks might just rip it in on you pre. Um, so he always has at least jacks. All right, I'll say that. He always has at least jacks. Or not at least jacks, sorry. At least fives and at most jacks. Not at least jacks. He always has at least fives and, uh, yeah, like I said, at, at most jacks probably. I went for it two in a row. Yeah, two hands in a row. I threw about this guy like this. Um, yeah. So I delay see that this is a very, very interesting hand. And I'll explain my thought process on it as I have done with all of them because there's probably going to be a lot of questions that arise from this one. So I defend Ace Jack suited, not a hand I really want to be three bet calling off with, um, maybe versus the button. But at the same time, we are 
there's like five people at this table and five people at the other table or something. Or six people at the other table. There was like 11 left when this thing happened. I decided to call. I still think like, you know, I'm ahead of a lot of his hands. I would prefer to call on a board that has one diamond on it. But at the same time, I still do think I beat, you know, like King 10 suited, King Jack. Uh, maybe just over name like King 8 suited, the 7 6 suited, 7 8 suited, stuff like that. Like Ace 5. All the, all the suited, the only suited uh, ace I don't beat is, is ace king. Um, so anyway, it goes check, check. Here, I think he would still bet a queen. So, I'm not putting a queen in his range anymore. Um, I just don't think that he would check a queen. Like, why would why would he check a queen? It doesn't make sense. Like, I, I could have like jack 10, king jack, whatever, and then I'm seeing a free river. This is where it gets dicey. So I bet one big blind, right? I'm trying to get a hand like ace 10 to just like call. Like maybe he just calls. All right, then I get raised to 4.94. So my plan of just like getting to showdown is completely ruined. At this point, I would say there's like a 90% chance I don't have the best hand. I would say this guy's got a nine. This guy's got a nine, like a lot of the times, maybe tens, maybe jacks, but I have jack, maybe kings, maybe aces, but I have an ace. I, I mean, yeah, a lot of, it's mostly nine X, I feel like, and I feel like he probably thinks I just have like an under pair to the nine or have a nine as well. So once I just, <laughs> once I decided I didn't have any showdown value, uh, I actually decided I would rather, okay, first of all, let's talk about this. I'd rather have ace jack of clubs here because then I block, um, queen jack of clubs, but it's pretty irrelevant when he checks turn. I think I decided to rip it in and rep quads. I think like, I, <laughs> I know it sounds so stupid to, to rep quads, but I decided to rip it in and, uh, he ends up folding. He tanked. He tanked, and then he folded. So uh, that was that was a crazy hand. So anyway, um, then this guy rips. I call. We beat Ace Nine. Got to win your flips. So yeah, standard. All right. Here, uh, I decided to make it a sizing where he couldn't really peel on me. Where. Off the, we're like just off the off the final table bubble. This hand gets really weird. Um, here I definitely regret not betting because the ace came obviously, and then he bets. I just decided, even though I think his range is like super wide from the the small blind because I feel like he, you know, was raising the small blind a decent amount. Um, these are only the hands I view pips, so like I fold it to him too sometimes. When he raised the small blinds, but um, I think it's a good, really good card for him to bluff. And I don't know, like he could have queen jack, king jack, stuff like that that doesn't barrel the turn or that doesn't. Mm, I think he'd barrel king jack. I think he'd barrel queen jack too, I guess. But uh, it's just tough for me to say, like, what does he check turn and then bomb ace with? He just had he had, he could have a lot of different bluffs because the ace is such a good card for him to bluff, so it's unfortunate. I thought about ripping river on him. Here we check. I think c betting's fine. I think checking's good too. Pot control, and then just getting value from him. A worse nine x. So you happen to have jack nine. Here it's just. Just min race and basically all in. Here I have led because it was such a good flop for big blind in my opinion. Then I turn an ace. He bets. I call. We get to showdown and I three out of the one the turn. So that was pretty sick. Here I think I could even go like 1.7, like something smaller, like say 0.3 big blinds. I just think the sizing is like kind of irrelevant. Um, this sizing is fine, obviously, you know, like less than a third pop, but. I think like you're just trying to get the immediate folds out like you know like the maybe if he flatted a hand like jack 10 suited you know that's getting out of there 
uh, stuff that just like you check and they could turn equity and you don't want them to. So here we, he checks to us. We were gonna, we were gonna bet and then we were gonna bet on the river probably, um, unless it was like a club that came. I didn't like this at all. Uh, I, it's just the first time Scott three bet me. We're literally on the final table bubble, and I have not seen this guy three bet at all. Um, I kind of want to see his stats. So he three bet ten percent. His VPIP was thirty nineteen. It's just weird because for me, he he wasn't three betting that often. Um, I don't have that many like I don't have a huge sample on him, but I think maybe looking back on it and how he played at the final table, maybe I got owned a little bit. But I decided to just call um, again because we're on the final table bubble. And then he bets. So he bets this and then he bets this. I decided to just fold. I really don't know about that one. I think maybe I need to call two streets. But I ended up folding. Here, he only had like 12 big, so we just rip on him. This is just the worst end. Uh, so two bigs. Um, he checks. I I took a long time to think about what, what I wanted to do on this river in game. Because we were, you know, very close to the FT. Um, I decided to check. I uh, I don't love it. I don't love it at all. No wait, this is the FT. Sorry. Now because this guy's because we were at the FT, I didn't V pip a single hand from the time that we got to here to the time that we lost th this guy. So anyway, I should have bet this river. It was a mistake. This is the final table. I was worried about him maybe check jamming on me and then putting me in a bad spot with Kai Wee though, uh, right there. And then like, it doesn't even matter in the end because here I just like made a mistake of calling and then he snapped, he snapped that three fourths pot. And I folded here, I'm in raise. I decided to just like rip it in. And the reason I'm going faster is because we're towards the end. I decided just to rip it in. Um, I mean, if he has a five, he has a five. Uh, I mean, obviously I never have like aces or kings or whatever here, but I think just protecting your equity in the pot, or not protecting your equity, but just a full equity denial, like don't let him even check raise you. Um, it's probably best. This is my bust out hand. Uh, so it's very interesting and worth talking about. I think the jacks, like looking at this guy's stats now, like, Maybe the Jacks was like my worst, the mistake where like things just started, I lost my momentum kind of. Um, I lost like a fourth of my stack in that hand folding, but he could have me beat, whatever. Anyway, this hand here, uh, it's weird with Kaiwi though, having 6.37, and then um, the payouts were like 9,000 for first. I got like, like it's like fifteen or sixteen hundred for seventh, and then it was like nineteen hundred or something for sixth. Um, so yeah, I, I was obviously clearly in uh, in clear sixth place. Like this guy was probably gonna bust within the next orbit if he didn't double up. And uh, oh man, I'm trying to pull up here. You go. Here's ICMizer. I don't know why. Okay, there it is. So here's what ICMizer wants us to do. Um, when this guy opens and this guy flats, it wants us to push ace 10 plus, ace five suited, ace eight suited plus, fours plus, and I guess like it's not, because of the, uh, the payout structure, um, I guess, it's not really, yeah, like the payout structure, the, the jumps were not that great between sixth and seventh. So 
I guess that's why it's okay with us going like we're pretty wide here. There's not much to worry about with ICM stuff. And this guy should be opening wide. He should be opening 40%. This guy should be flat 30% of hands. And then so I should be jamming 13% um, of hands. So yeah, I, I ended up jamming. I wasn't sure about it in game. I, I didn't love the spot. I'm curious once I go all in, um, like what this guy should be calling with. If this is, okay, hold on. So I'm trying to figure it out. All right, so if I push, this guy folds. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> this guy should be, this guy should be calling with fours plus. King Queen suited, Ace Eight suited, Ace Ten O, King Queen O. He's just getting a really good price, and he's got a lot of chips. So he ends up calling, and this guy ends up calling too, which honestly is like, all right. So let me see here. So if I do this, this guy should be calling. Oh, I I ran out of my subscription. All right, so it looked like ace queen plus, right? Because he still had someone behind. Um, so anyway, he ends up calling as well. But I, honestly, I don't think he had like a decent hand because he just like checked it down and then folded to a river bet. I honestly think I might have had Jake P beat. Like the only hand that he could possibly have that beats me is ace queen. And outside of that, like any of the pocket pairs would bet the bet the flop or bet turn. So. I'm pretty sad this king hit because if like a 10 doesn't come on the river, then I think I at least chop with Jake or win. Um, outside of that, like just very unfortunate for me. I, I made the right play though. So that's all I can do. And uh, that's the end of, yeah, that's the end of that.